Now as we start doing the text, there's a few things to think about. First is what is the font and how is that driven or determined? And two is the size. Typically when you look at any set of drawings, you want the text or the majority of the text, except for headings and title block and whatnot, to be consistently sized. Now that might sound easy, but a lot of times technical drawings include um, various types of drawings that are at three or four or five or ten different drawing scales. So as you draw things full size in your drawing area here, they're then converted to be printed at various scales. So if you made all your text the same size in your drawing here, but then some of it was printed at a large scale and some of it was printed at a small scale, then you end up with text that looks all different sizes. So you have to kind of follow a proper process in order to make sure that your text looks consistently sized on a print, even when all those prints are printed at different scales. So again, you're always drawing at true size, one-to-one -one of all the building components themselves, but annotation, meaning objects that are related to text, are then sized up or down based upon the intended scale for printing of those pieces of annotation. So first, let's look at the text style setup, and that's going to drive the font, and then we'll control the scale and make some text. On your ribbon at the top, you have an annotation pull down, and when you hit that, it flies out with your style control. The first row is text style. The pull down chooses the current style, and the icon to the left of that opens the text style manager. Your other option is to type style at the command prompt. So again, the icon there in the first row under the annotation pull down of the ribbon. So your first or the first item here, the top item in your text style manager tells you the current text style. If it's not current already, you can double click on annotative in order to make it current, or you can hit set current on the right. You want to choose a font such as Arial, something that's easy to read and clean. Some uh, companies still use a hand-drawn type font, but um, you know it's kind of silly, in my opinion, to force a computer drawing to look hand-drawn when it's not really necessary. So it makes more sense to go with something as easy to read as possible. Your size should ideally be controlled as annotative, meaning this box is checked. So what that means is that as we change the annotation scale, that's going to size the text for us automatically. That keeps us from having to do any math or look at a table in order to see what size the text needs to be based upon the intended scale. And to the right of that, you have the paper text height. In other words, what is the actual intended text height on the piece of paper when you're finished with the drawing and it's printed out? There's two different schools of thought here. Some companies will leave this at zero and that allows each individual piece of text to be set based upon what you'd like it to be. The other school of thought is if you want all the text on this style to be consistent is to input a size here and then that's going to make it very easy and consistent across the board for any text that lives on this style. So I'm going to make it 330 seconds here because all the text that we're going to make is going to be that size. So that means once we input it here, it's a done deal, and we don't need to think about it anymore. So again, choose your font, make sure it's annotative, make sure the size is input here or zero, depending on how you want to control it, and then make sure that that style is set to be current, the annotative one. So then we can hit apply and close. If apply is grayed out, that means that it's already applied. So then you can just close. So that's set up the text style. Now we have to, before we make the text, we ideally make a decision about the intended print scale. It takes planning ahead. That's not always very easy to do. You can change your mind, but it's much easier to just get it right ahead of time. In the case of this assignment, we're given a scale of a quarter inch per foot, meaning from the annotation scale button, choose a quarter inch per foot for your, your print scale for the text. Your annotation scale button is generally on the lower right, either on the very bottom row or on a status bar above the command line. So now when we make the text, it's going to be sized when it's printed at a quarter scale. It'll be 330 seconds in height. That's a pretty standard note size. 
Now for making text, we can either use the big A icon at the ribbon on the annotation panel, or we can type T for text, or M T for multi-line text. So once you type T for text, then you click two diagonal corners to form a text box, and that opens the text editor in the ribbon. So you have a flashing cursor in the middle of your screen where you clicked your diagonal points, and then the ribbon has the control of your options for the text. So you could control the text style here and the size, but all that's done already because we set up the text style properly. Assuming you do that, you don't want to mess with it here, because if you do, and then you want to go back and change it, it's more difficult. So let the text style kind of drive the car there, and don't fiddle with it in your individual pieces of text. Uh, you can change justification, you can do bulleted lists and all that if you wanted. In this case, I'm going to name my room. So we want to turn on caps lock for most technical drawings, and then type in whatever you would like to call the room. Now, in a piece of text like this, normally you want to be center justified, because let's say it goes down to a second line, then it's nice to have it centered under the first line. So after you write your text, you can highlight the text and then pick justification. Now it's going to be center justified for me. So that's good. Now I can either click Close Text Editor, or I can click anywhere outside the text box in my drawing, and that will close out of the text editor box. Now if you make a mistake or you want to modify your text, you just double click on it, and that reopens the text editor again. So I could change my text now or change any settings that I wanted. It's easy to miss when you double click, and if you do, you'll know because you'll get a window, a green or blue selection window. So in that case, just press escape, and then try again, double click, and then hopefully you won't miss, and you'll know if the text editor opens or not. So there's my text. Now I can move it around, rotate it, all my normal commands work. Move, rotate, copy, etc. Okay, so now I need another room name. You could either make the text again, or you can also copy this piece of text down and then just change what it says. That's another easy option. Because once you get one piece that is the right size, then you can copy it around and change what it says by double clicking on it. So now I have my two room names and compared to the PDF, my assignment is complete.